Perfect. Well, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. I'm uh, uh, very excited to have Tom Poland with us. Actually, funny enough, uh, Tom and I did a, a podcast um, about a month ago and we just discussed how, how useful uh, a presentation of Webinar Together would be. And uh, we've, uh, we've, we've talked about a month and the day is finally here. So I'm really hey. excited to have, uh, have Tom with you. And I want to give a quick introduction on who Tom is before we uh, jump right in. So for anyone that doesn't know Tom, uh, Tom Poland is an inbound marketing specialist with 37 years experience. He's a multiple best-selling author. There's the book. Um, and has sold multiple businesses over four decades. And I just sold my first business, Tom. And if you've sold multiple, um, I still have a lot to learn because that was one hell of a process. Um, it can be stressful, can it? <laughs> <laughs> it definitely can. He's worked with clients in 27 cities and 15 different time zones. Um, you know, describes himself as more of a voluntary married and lives in the house, as I said, in Queensland, Australia. Tom, thank you so much for, uh, for being here with us today. Oh, it's a real privilege to be here. Thanks, Sean, for the invitation. I think any, 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 on any occasion where I'm asked to present some ideas, it's a privilege uh, and, and it's a pleasure. We'll see if we can't make it some fun and, and valuable as well. Perfect. And I know today, you know, some of the things that, you know, for everyone that's here today, some of the things we're going to be learning, and I'm really excited to hear from Tom and Tom's perspective is, you know, how to structure a presentation so you get the right members um, motivated, you know, how to grow your email list. As we all know, um, you know, when I started my first business, the email list was all I had. So it's probably one of the most important things you can have to grow a business. Um, he's going to go through a five-step strategy uh, to get the highest quality people, because I always say, Quality is always better than quantity. Um, and then lastly, we're going to talk about how to generate inbound leads for your business um, at not a huge expense. Because I know right now with everything that's going on in the world, um, people are always looking to save money where they can. So, um, Tom, I'm so excited. Then I'll let you, uh, you'll let you take it from here. Uh, thanks, Sean. And folks, it's, I, I do have a, a PowerPoint deck that you can see behind me here. But uh, we, we're going to cover all the major points that we you know, I said I was going to cover, of course, but um, if there's anything else along the way, feel free to put questions, comments in the chat. Um, Sean's going to have a look at that. Uh, I think you can probably toggle between speaker view and gallery view. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the setup is on this, this particular uh, account. But behind me, you'll see um, the presentation, and that's what we're going to be whisk whisking our way through. So I've, put to, I've customized this specifically for Sean's audience, uh, you, uh, because he said this is probably what they're going to be interested in. But uh, time permitting, we can we can go elsewhere as well. Um, Sean mentioned that I, I live in Australia. I'm actually a, a New Zealander, and for those of you who don't know where I am, this is this is Sydney here in Melbourne. Which you might have heard of. Um, I actually used to live in Auckland, and many years ago, flew over on a the Big Silver Bird just just north of uh, Brisbane, a pl little place called Castaways Beach. And this so this is this is where we live. Um, this is we're up up here, and uh, and that's just. My wife is literally on the beach walking the dog as we speak. <laughs> and the beautiful thing about marketing with webinars is that you can do your marketing from anywhere in the world to anywhere, anywhere in the world. <clears throat> <clears throat> it's normally the technology that trips up. <laughs> this time it's my vocal cords. So um, that, that's, that's one of the many benefits of doing all your marketing with webinars. So we get there's some, there's some big problems, some big issues that people have with marketing webinars that often presents them prevents them from moving forward. So what I'm going to do is first of all, I'm going to lay down what's the case for marketing webinars? Why, <clears throat> after now 41 years in sales and marketing, have I settled on this as being the number one best way to do my marketing, generate leads literally all around the world while I sit here in our house on, on the set of little castaways beach. So the, the case for marketing webinars versus other options that you have, uh, then we'll look at uh, how to track fresh quality audiences. So we want to have the right people in the audience, people that have an interest in what you're doing that can gain value from your presentation and some of whom will reach out and, and want to connect with you and work with you. So how to get, how to attract the fresh quality audiences and, and how to do that. What's, what's the best way to do that? And surprisingly for a lot of people, the best way to do that is actually completely free. You don't have to pay for those audiences and it's also the best quality uh, and it's also completely sustainable. You can rinse and repeat week after week or month after month. So we'll, we'll cover audiences. Uh, we'll cover how to filter inquiries. This is the five step process that, uh, Sean mentioned before, so that you do the bulk of your presentation is to audiences, is to groups, big or small, but it's to groups of people because that's where you get the scalability. 
and out of the size of the audiences comes predictability. Whereas if you're doing one-on-one -on -one marketing, there's not a lot that's predictable about it because you don't have, there's, there's no there's safety in numbers and you just don't have the numbers when you're doing one-on-one -on -one marketing. So we, we're doing the bulk of your initial marketing with, with, you know, with, with audiences, but when you get to handling the inquiries that you generate from the webinars one-on-one, -on -one, you wanna make sure that the people you're meeting with are highly likely to wanna to work with you and that they're ready to work with you, you've got the money to work with you. So how do you filter the inquiry so that you're not wasting their time or your time? Because I'm, I'm sure they'd agree that their time is just as, just as valuable as yours. And then we'll look at, at content. So the, these are the three big subjects that are headings that having spoken with Sean about what you guys might be interested in that, that we've come up with. So the capable webinars, the audiences, inquiries, and the content. Because between items two and four, in all surveys that we've done, 50% of people say, look, I love the idea of marketing with webinars, but I am not moving forward because either I don't know how to get the audiences there and I don't want to do like a Facebook Live with one person sitting there and I look like a, you know, a loser. <laughs> or I'm not sure how to articulate the promise. I'm not sure how to message the magic in my marketing uh, so that people really enjoy attending. And most of us like practicing karma marketing. What I mean by karma marketing, it's not quieter, but K-A-R-M-A, -A, so that every step in your marketing process, people will gain value. Well, most people will gain value. So that whoever becomes a client or doesn't, doesn't become a client, you've made the world a slightly better place in the process of doing your marketing. So karma being, you know, you reap what you sow. So how do I create the content so that it's valuable for people who give up their time and it also attracts the right people to reach out to me to want to become, you know, talk about becoming a client. So that, that's, that's the agenda. Anything else specifically you want to know, just pop it in the questions uh, in, the, in the chat box and we'll see if we can get time to go to it. So let's, let's rock and roll. Um, I, don't have, I don't have anything about me, but I'm a multiple best-selling author. I generate hundreds and hundreds of quality leads. A lot of people say you can get 10,000 leads a day or whatever. They're normally just contacts, but I can generate... 500 to 1,000 quality uh, inquiry, well, registrations of interest every single month through webinars, uh, have clients in 27 cities around the world, 15 time zones, and so on and so on and so on. Enough of me. Um, so, but probably need to hear a little bit about that to know that it's not my first rodeo, right? <laughs> so let's have a look at the case for marketing webinars. And the case for marketing webinars has to be presented within the context of other options. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about some of the other options you have for your marketing. And, and I'll explain to you why that relative to marketing with webinars, your other options are either A, expensive, and why would you want to spend some money if it's not necessary? So they're either relatively expensive or relatively complicated or relatively ineffective. So I, I, it's not like I'm, see, the reason I'm teaching marketing with webinars is that I did marketing with webinars for my business but I became so successful that people were more interested in how I was doing my marketing than I was what I was doing for my business, which was a, which was a curriculum-based training and coaching business. So I ended up teaching marketing webinars because it works so incredibly well. It's not like I thought, well, I've got marketing webinars, how do I sell that? It was completely the other way around. So the case for marketing webinars, let's look at other options. So one of the other options is that you run conferences or workshops or seminars. Now, um, good luck with that right now. <laughs> Everyone's going into lockdown with COVID, but we will get a vaccine one day. And, and that, you know, so let's, let's accept that probably for the next six to 12 months, physical events where we meet in a room is not going to be uh, an option at all, at least until we get a, a, COVID, a, a COVID vaccine. Now I've run 500 physical events. So we'd, in the old days, we'd send out direct mail letters or we'd do, then we did fax marketing, we'd do SMS marketing and so on. But we'd fill a room full of people interested in the subject, uh, the subject specialty that I had. So you, you can do that. You know, you can get a seminar or a workshop together or, or a multiple day conference. And you can, it's, it's one of the most effective ways to do your marketing is to have a room full of prospects and to speak with them because you have the eye contact, you have uh, the whole body language thing, you have the three dimensional advantage. There's no doubt that it's speaking to groups of people is one of the most effective ways to do your marketing. And if you think about this, think about, the oldest, most effective marketing method in the world. What, what would you say that would be? You can, you can type it in after because I want you to think and I want you to engage your brain because you'll get more value when you're engaged. If you have 
your email open, shut it down. This is too valuable and you're here. So you might as well pay full attention because it'll be worth your while financially. So what would you say would be the oldest, most effective marketing method in the world? Think back a couple of thousand years. Any ideas? Looks uh, like some people are wor marketing. Wor word of mouth, word of mouth and church. Yeah, that, well, <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, it was speaking to groups of people. And if you have any doubt about that, just, just have a think for a moment about how many uh, clients Christ, Buddha and Muhammad have. You know, there's billions, I've got billions of clients. All those three guys did was speak to groups of people and mostly small groups. So speaking to groups of people is the oldest, most proven effective marketing method in the world. So you fill a room, a conference room full of prospects and you deliver value and you talk about how you work with your clients, you're going to pick up some clients. So that's, and I've done, as I said, over 500 of those events. But here's the thing. First of all, we got COVID. Secondly, this is really expensive, especially if it goes wrong. And also it's very complicated. So yes, effective, but very expensive, very complicated. I can fill a digital room with more prospects. Uh, and, and if I have a Zoom account and I do it under 40 minutes, I can do it for free. <laughs> so that's a really good price. So why would you, I'm not saying don't do physical events, but I'm saying certainly do marketing with webinars and you can complement or supplement with physical events when that's available. So don't do something that's expensive and complicated and could be a disaster if it doesn't work out for you when you can do something that's very inexpensive and also highly effective. So relative to physical events, marketing webinars, if you add up the efficiency and effectiveness, if you assign each one of those features a score for efficiency and effectiveness, the marketing webinars tops physical events every single day of the week because they're simple, but easier, I should say simpler, easier, and faster and much less expensive are still very effective if you do them right. The next option you have uh, would be something like, I guess, social media. So content marketing would be included in that, I guess, you, you blog or you podcast every week with some really good quality content, then you would definitely be able to generate new client inquiries after about five years. Uh, so it's, I know, so I'm not saying this social media content marketing doesn't work. I'm saying it's really hard to get it to work and to establish credibility and establish a real following of people who are genuinely, genuinely interested in what you're saying, it takes a long time. But you can do it very inexpensively. So that, that's a big plus. And you can reach a wide audience. You can go global with that, unlike the physical events where it's, it's in a particular city or in a particular town. So there are big advantages with content marketing and social media, but it does take a long time to start generating clients. And I've written a bunch of best-selling books. And I can tell you, even with a best-selling book, you have to market the heck out of the book in order to get the leads from selling the book. So uh, books are a bit like content marketing. Uh, quite a lot of work goes into it. You have to do it consistently over an extended period of time. And then yes, you will get some leads in. But again, marketing webinars, you can set them up relatively simple, relatively easy, relatively inexpensive, if not completely free. Social media is really good for keeping your brand in people's brains until they're ready to buy but you need a direct response type of marketing where you have people in, a, in an environment, in a medium, which is designed for them to be able to respond to a call to action. So we've got to match the medium to the market. So social media is good for some markets, not so good for others. Um, out back, you know, we live, live in this park-like environment around us and a little walk to the beach was lovely, but out back I have beehives and I have Monty, my, my border collie friend, have his dinner bowl. And if I put, if I go out back and put a beautiful bunch of flowers in Monty's dinner bowl, he's going to look up at me and he's going to go, what? <laughs> Love for the bees, Tom. And if I put them in front of the beehive, then the bees are all over. And if I put steak in Monty's dinner bowl, well, there's no selling required because I've matched the medium to the market. And it's the same thing with your marketing. If you get your marketplace, the right medium, then they'll be all over it like bees were over, over the flowers. So getting Monty, my dog, to eat the flowers would require a lot of selling. I mean, it would be, you know, poor twisting stuff. But I want to underline the point that social media is great for some context. Uh, you can keep your brand and people's brand until they're ready to buy, but it's not really the medium through which you generate new client inquiries or new client inquiries. Your next option online would be to do some, some advertising. You can do pay-per-click, you can do 
uh, you know, some sort of uh, Facebook advertising and funnels. Uh, you can do SEO, uh, pay-per-click, for example, or SEO will work really well if you've got a local small business, say you're a dry cleaner or you're a massage therapist and you're in a small town or you're in a defined suburb, then you definitely want to do a pay-per-click or SEO. But if your reach is much broader and you've got a lot of competitors, for example, you're a consultant or you're a business coach or you're a corporate or business trainer or a financial planner, and there's a lot of other options, then it's going to be really, really hard for you to, to bank SEO or pay-per-click or Facebook funnels or LinkedIn or anything like that actually work really well for your LinkedIn advertising, I mean. So when you, when you look at pay-per-click, if you want to do pay-per-click very well, and I've, you know, I've, as a marketer, professional marketer, we've had We've used well before click funnels. We were doing Facebook advertising with tripwires and auto responders and segments, actually, and everything else. When you do pay per click, to do it well, you have to put a lot of resource with it. And SEO is exactly search engine optimization, which is getting found on Google. Again, you've got to put a lot of resource with it, and it's an extended period of time, and it's expensive. You might think it's free, it's not. You've got to do a lot of keyword research, you've got to do a lot of articles, a lot of content, et cetera. You've got to put ads in place if it's Facebook. You just split test the ads with different colors, different titles, different offers, takes it to different landing pages, uh, two different offers on the landing pages, two different free things, two different, uh, then 67 or $49 things, and then and so on and so on. And so the funnel goes down. So all of these things I'm advising you to not do. I'm saying not to not do them because I haven't done them. I've done them and I've made money out of them, but I'm telling you there's a better option called marketing with webinars. So pay-per-click, expensive complicated if you do it well, it can make you really good money, but again, it's a long-term thing, it's quite expensive. So I wouldn't get a ladder and climb right to the top of the tree to get some apples, if there was some apples that I could just reach up and pluck the low-lying fruit, marketing good nights one of those. So let me tell you what a lot of these things have in common, uh, pay-per-click, uh, conferences, seminars, etc. cetera, social media, blogging, podcast, what a lot of them have in common is the mass marketing. And I had, you know, I had a business once and I had a, a new marketing manager come in that I'd appointed. And Jerome was frenetic in his activity. He was on the phone, he was calling people, he was following up, his emails, he was going out to meetings. He was all over the place, like a chicken with his head cut off running around, you know. And on a Friday afternoon, I said to him, Jerome, I want you to do me a favor this weekend. I said, I want you to go to the video DVD store as it was then, because we had DVDs, it wasn't any live streaming back then. I said, I want you to get a movie called Enemy at the Gates. And Enemy at the Gates is the story of a Russian farmer in World War II. And he gets dragged off the farm because the Nazis have invaded uh, the Soviet Union. And uh, what they did, their methodology is they didn't have many rifles, many bullets. So they'd give one man, they'd line up 50, 50 men and behind them had 50 more men. And the 50 men in the front row had one rifle and two bullets. And the 50 men behind the 50 men in the front row, but the instructions were, all your men are gonna charge over there towards the German machine guns. And when the person in the front row is shot, person behind him picks up the rifle and, and, and with the two bullets and keeps running towards the machine guns. Everyone got that? Cool. Of course, it was a complete massacre. Now, the Russians in the early days of the war did this not once or twice, but did this hundreds of times. Get some farm boys, stick them in a uniform, get them to share a rifle and off we go charging towards the guns. So uh, what happens, of course, is this, our, our, our main character here is you know, charging, charging towards the guns and the guys in front of him inevitably gets shot down. So he, he picks up the rifle, but he, he, he's scared. I mean, why wouldn't you be, right? And he, and, he, and he thinks, well, there's no way I'm charging towards those machine guns. So he pretends to be dead. And after the battle is over, he sort of crawls off back into the town and, and flops into this water uh, this, this water fountain in the middle of this town square just to get his breath and to try and recover. And in drives this high command German vehicle, this, this Mercedes and a, and a general gets out of the car and he's kind of looking over the, the water fountain, the lip of the water fountain. He sees this general and he's still got his rifle. So he kind of pops his rifle up over the, the lip of the fountain and ping, kills the general. And that starts a career as a sniper. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story for Jerome when he came back on the Monday morning, we had a debrief, was that here he was like one of the hundred men charging machine guns, full of energy, full of, you know, full of, yay, we can do this. But it was mass. There was nothing specific or targeted about it. So with marketing with webinars, I'm going to show you how to attract exactly the right prospect. 
And instead of spraying everything everywhere and hoping like heck that someone somewhere in the digital ether is going to read what you've written or is going to you know, respond to a call to action, I'm going to show you a much more targeted and laser-like way so that your efforts when you're presenting are much more effective because they're much more focused in much the same way as a sniper. So that's the first thing that a lot of the mass marketing methods that you've been told you should be engaging in, the first thing they have in common is that they're not actually very efficient at all. And a lot of them aren't particularly effective, certainly not in the short term relative to marketing webinars. The first thing they have in common. The second thing they have in common is that it's very much like the gold rush in California in 1849. So you all know the answer to this, but let me ask it anyway. So who would you say made most of the money in the gold rush? Was it the people doing the digging for the gold or was it people selling them the equipment, the tents, the pickaxes, the buckets, the pans, you know? Obviously, it was, it was the people like, you know, Levi Strauss who was selling tents and jeans and pickaxes and so on. And it's kind of the same with click, <laughs> with click things, with Facebook advertising and with LinkedIn marketing. The people that are making all the money out of the, the, these styles of marketing are the people that are selling you the tools. You, you, could, you could line up like a thousand people who are doing Facebook advertising with click whatever you want to call it. And I could show you 999 people who have lost money. They bought the tools, much like the, the gold diggers bought the tools, and they're out there wishing and hoping. And they're all looking around going, well, I guess this thing works because everyone is doing it. I mean, everyone's out here digging for gold, so there must be gold, right? But it's kind of like the emperor's clothes. You know, every, yeah, everyone's doing it. Everyone's, you know, the emperor is the story of the emperor's clothes where he gets made this beautiful garment and, and he's, he's told it's so beautiful and he just believes it must be beautiful, but he can't actually see anything. And he parades through the town. He's naked on this horse. And everyone's been told, you better, you better make sure that you tell the emperor how wonderful he looks, because if you don't, you'll be headed off to the dungeon. So everyone's standing there scared. Each individual is going, hey, he's naked, but they don't, can't bring themselves to say it. So it's kind of like that. Everyone's out there doing click this and Facebook that and LinkedIn, whatever, in the marketing. They go, I guess it works, because everyone else it works, and all these testimonies, it works, and there's a money back guarantee, so I guess it works. So I just keep doing it. So it's kind of like the gold rush. Now, my specialty in you know, all the books that I've written on, on marketing, the Leadsology, the Science of Being Demand, uh, there's Marketing the Invisible, there's uh, another bestseller was, was Inbound Marketing Book and Marketing Women and so on. My target market are not people who sell physical products. Uh, so I, uh, my specialty is not people who manufacture yogurt or build houses or, or sell cars. Although I, you, if that's you, you'll still get some value from this, from the principles that I outline. But my specialty is people who are marketing ideas. And that might be in the form of coaching services or training uh, or consulting or maybe even SaaS, you know, SaaS software as a service. But the difference between marketing ideas and marketing a physical product it's night and day. So you might do marketing courses and you know, in the room or taking the program of people who are dry cleaners or massage therapists or car sales. And whoever's delivering the marketing is giving you a one size fits all solution. But when you're marketing ideas, it's actually far more like you're proposing marriage than it is selling a washing machine. Um, a quick story to illustrate the point. I once was stupid enough to be having coffee with my wife in the kitchen and ask her a question. The question was, who do you think is the world's most irresistible man? And she came up with the answer, who can blame her, Hugh Jackman. I mean, he can sing, he can dance, he's good looking, he's got a body that Adonis would die for. I, Arnold, Arnold Schwarzenegger in his, his younger days would have been jealous of him. He's a philanthropist, he's community-minded, he's an environmentalist. This is probably the world's most perfect man. And he's got hair as well. <laughs> Anywho, so I said to her, where do you think is what? She said, Hugh Jackman. I said, oh, that's interesting. And I was having a coffee. We were just having a coffee in the kitchen. And I said to him, well, answer me this. I said, I knew, I, this was not premeditated, right? It was just a brain sneeze I had. I said, well, let me ask you this. I said, what if there was a knock at the front door right now? And you put your coffee down and you went to the front door, me talking to my wife, and you opened the front door and there was Hugh Jackman. And he drops to one knee and he holds up a small red velvet box and he flips the lid and there is a diamond ring sparkling in the sunshine. And he said to you, look, you don't know me, but my name is Hugh Jackman. 
would you make me the happiest man on earth? Would you marry me and run away and live with me in my penthouse departments and fly with me in my Learjet to the Riviera? What would you say to Hugh Jackman if he proposed to you? And my wife she flutters her eyelids and she looks at me and she says, oh, dear Tom. She said, you know, I love you, right? And I said, yeah, and I think I know what you're going to say next. And she said, well, you know, the definition of irresistible is you can't resist. She said, I'd run away with the man. I mean, it's Hugh freaking Jackman. <laughs> so, so I said to her, um, I thought about it for a moment, you know, sort of wiped the tear out of the corner of my eye and, and thought, I, I said, you know what, I don't think you need to apologize. My wife says, why is that? I said, well, if there was a knock at the front door right now and I went and opened it, me, and it was Hugh Jackman, and Hugh Jackman proposed to me, Tom Poland, um, I think I'd run away as well, and I'm not even gay. <laughs> you know, it's Hugh freaking Jackman. So what's the moral of the story here? The moral of the story is that as, as a marketer of ideas or services or SaaS or financial planner coaches, but okay, we are not the commercial equivalent of Hugh Jackman. We can't just go into a business meeting and hand out a business card and expect people to fall in love with the idea of working with us. It's premature proposition. We have to give people the opportunity to spend time with us, kind of like on a first date, before we propose they reach out and book a time to talk with us about becoming a client. Now, that is a critical and fundamental, and it's a reason why so many people's marketing efforts end in disappointment and frustration, because they don't, haven't understood the need that when you're marketing ideas or services, you're asking people to enter into a relationship with you. And they need to get to know you first. So what are the options? Well, one is you can do social media, but social media is kind of like a two minute speed date. You're going to be engaging with people who don't have much skin in the game. Now this is important to get the amount of skin in the game that you ask people to put in to be about the right amount. It's kind of like what I call Goldilocks marketing, not too much, not too little, not too often, not cold, just right. So, Two minute social media, kind of like speed dating. There's not a lot of skin in the game for the consumer of your content. Kind of like two minute speed dating. Uh, you also don't want to ask people on first sight to marry you, you're right, because that would be a little bit over the top. But right in the middle somewhere is webinars. Webinars is more like a dinner out on the town. It's kind of like, a, let's go out for a dinner date. Uh, we might see a show, we have coffee afterwards. And if you ask someone for that scenario, socially speaking, and they say, yes, you know, they have an interest because they've just got, they've got a whole evening they're putting aside to kind of check you out. So you can ask people for too little skin in the game. You can ask people for too much skin in the game, but a webinar is just the right skin of the game. Someone's gonna give up an hour of their time. That's just about right for, the, for you to know that they have an interest in your subject matter. Sean, why don't we stop and see if there's any questions or comments on yeah. uh, the case for marketing webinars. Perfect. So we had uh, a few questions. It looks like, uh, how do you let people know you're giving a webinar when there is no email list to notify them? Right. Well, it's a great question. And, and you know, we, we, we're going to come on to how to attract email list, exactly. But I will say this, and it's a big one that stops a lot of people from moving forward is where do you get your audiences from? And almost all of my clients, when they start, don't have an email list. And the thing is this, here's a question. How many of you were born with an email list? <laughs> Not, none of us came out with an email list, right? Exactly. So I started with an email list of eight people. Now it's 31,000 and growing about a thousand a month, which is nice. It's kind of, email lists are kind of like a snowball. Once you get up to a certain yep. momentum, they just, they just seem to keep growing. So, so you weren't born with an email list. And that means that if you want an email list, you have to start. And as, as Goethe said, and I'm paraphrasing him very loosely, I'm sure, but as, as he said, you know, the beginning of a thing, that's where the genius and the power and the magic is, that the moment one commits, all manner of unforeseen circumstances comes to one's aid, which one could never have foreseen. So whatever you dream of, begin it. So if you don't have an email list, as soon as you get off this call, go to MailChimp or MailerLite, L-I-T-E, sign up for a free account. The first 2,000 subscribers are free. You've got no reason financially not to do that. Then the next thing you do is you go back through Outlook or iCal or your calendar, and you put in there everyone that has met with you 
with, with the prospect of doing business or has done business with you. You might have five, six, seven, eight, ten people. I don't care. The power is in the starting of the thing. Yeah. So that that right there is pretty valuable advice. I know literally know of people that have done public speaking events for or over 20 years, have spoken to more than a million people and still haven't started an email list. That is almost a crime. <laughs> yeah. Um, and as Sean, you know, as Sean will tell you, alluded to earlier, you know, the email list is that's the gold mine. So, so grow your, sorry to mix my metaphors around gold, gold digging, but that's the gold mine. So start, that's the big thing. Yeah. Um, the second and, tool, and, uh, sorry, D, D's asking the second tool. I think it was Mailer Light you mentioned. There was MailChimp, Mailer Light. And I think there's yeah, also I really contact, like, contact. Yeah, L-I-T-E, Mailer, as in, I'm going to mail you something, Mailer, L-I-T-E. That's actually my, my preferred platform okay. because it, it's, it, they keep things really simple. They have a free account for the first couple of thousand subscribers. But it does a lot of things like autoresponders, which you will want later on. Um, we we have a different platform, but we're kind of embedded in it. We spend so much time and money developing systems, we don't use MailerLite. But that's the one I'd recommend. And Mailchimp is pretty robust, but yeah, MailerLite's a good one. Yeah. So we actually uh, internally for our newsletters and stuff, we actually use Mailchimp as well, and then um, we'll push right. people over to uh, to autoclose, obviously for that for that automation. Um, I know you know some of the stuff right. that Tom was mentioning today. I can of course. Through. Yeah, I can personally relate to, um, I know personally when, you know, when he mentions SEO and some of those stuff, content takes time. I'll tell you, Tom, when we started, when I launched my first business, um, it probably took after two years, we started to see the results from content marketing. And even right. with SEO, I would say for the first six months, you don't see any results and then it slowly yeah. comes, but it's kind of like that snowball effect. Like you mentioned that um, as time keeps going, those are more long-term um, marketing plans that will help, yeah. but they're, they're not going to get you the short-term results. Yeah. Um, okay. Right. So let's, let's click on. So audiences. So we, we, I, I, I can get audiences. I just put one screenshot in here from, from a webinar day. I do, when I do a webinar day, I do one in the morning, one in the evening for the North American audience the European audience and Australian. So there's, I don't know, 747 or something uh, registrants. So we do this month in month out and these audiences are completely free and they're high quality. So, because they come from other people's email lists, more on that in a moment. But, but we, we've, we've, we've measured this. If we get a subscriber in the old days when we did Facebook ads with the tripwires and autoresponders get to, you know, we, we, now, when we started, they were a dollar per subscriber and now they're up to $12 per subscriber. So I stopped doing Facebook ads some time ago because it became too expensive. Thank you, Russell Brunson and ClickFunnels. <laughs> Supply and demand, so, you know, demand went up. So the cost went up, Zuckerberg put the price up. So these audiences are completely free and, and someone who registers for a webinar, like one of the 747 odd people on the screen behind me says that registered for that webinar day, are 20 times more likely to buy than a Facebook a subscriber from Facebook. 20 times. And the Facebook email subscriber or webinar registrant has cost you 12 bucks. These are free. So why on earth would you pay for a lead $12 or a subscriber for $12 when you get the same, another subscriber for free and, and 20 times more likely to buy it. No good reason. Okay. So, but you know, like I said, the gold rush, a lot of people made the money with selling the tools. So these are, this, this screen here shows for a 90 day period uh, that we had, uh, check it out. yeah, we had 72 people book a time to talk with me about becoming a client. This is over a 90 day period. So that's like one, more than one per business day. And you can see over here where it says completed. So this, this, by the way, is a screenshot from our booking platform report. 71 of the 72 people showed up. Now, if you've offered consults en masse before, you know it's typical for half the people not even to show up. But all of these 72 people that booked a time to talk with me one-on-one -on -one about becoming a client had been through a webinar. And the reason that you get such a high level of commitment is that they're motivated because they, when you run a webinar the right way, as a marketing webinar, it adds value. People want what you've got. So you're not doing these one-on-one -on -one meetings trying to sell them. Remember, selling is what you have to do when your marketing sucks. You're, you're, you're just confirming that they're in the right place. And it, now, if, if it's relevant, it's appropriate. Uh, and you might have 10 or 20% still that, that it's not. And you say, I'm sorry, I can't help you. But if it's relevant and appropriate, you just confirm that working together is the right thing to do. And, and what good marketing does is it simply puts an offer in front of people that are already looking for that offer. 
So selling start selling typically starts with a with a product or a service and tries to convince people that they should buy that product or service. That's selling. I'm not saying it's good or bad. I'm just saying that's what selling is. You have a product or service. Who's going to get to buy it? What marketing does is it works back from the marketplace, finds people who are looking for what you've got, and puts that off in front of them. So by by comparison, marketing is much more relaxed. It's much more authentic, if you like it, much more organic. So we've got we've got hundreds and hundreds of people coming to webinars every month. We've got uh, people booking consults, and and the net result of that is that people buy. And this is our sales cart for the same 90-day period. You can see an average. It's quite a small down there, but you can see down there there's an average of 97,000 US in sales per month. So so let's talk about how do you attract the right people to to your webinar, and and why a webinar is a great vehicle for attracting the right people. Well, you'd imagine a forest, and we're going to imagine that in this particular forest there are 100 sleeping bears. And we want them to eat your honey. You've got a honey pot. We really want them to eat your honey. So trouble is we know also that only three of them are actually hungry. They're all asleep, 100 bears, but three of them are hungry. So what are our options to get to find the three hungry bears that are ready for your honey? Well, you can go running through the forest. You can find a bear and you can get a sharp stick and poke it in the bum and wake it up. And if, if you're lucky and it's one of the three, you know, one of the 3%, then the bear will wake up and eat your honey and not you. <laughs> but if you're poking bears in the bum with a sharp stick, waking them up, some of them are going to be pretty angry. And so you better be a pretty good runner. That's like cold calling. That's like sending out 10,000 direct mail letters. It's like going to a business networking meeting to hand out your business card, pretending you're Hugh Jackman, you know, irresistible. It's just, we're just putting offers in front of people and we don't even know if they're interested. So the other option is, is marketing. And what marketing will do is it'll simply put the honeypot outside the forest and the three hungry bears that want to eat your honey are going to wake up and they're going to come out of the forest and they're going to eat your honey. And this honeypot represents not just the webinar, but your title. So to attract the right people to your webinar starts with getting the title right. So let me give you a title formula to make it easier for you. The first thing you want in your, in, your, in your title is it has to be benefit rich. It's not about the features of your product or service. There has to be an implied benefit. So in this demonstration of how my clients in 27 cities are generating a predictable weekly flow of high quality inbound new client inquiries, that's pretty benefit rich, right? The other thing you'll notice about my title is that it contains specifics and specifics are important because it gets you cut through. So if you're a leadership coach, you're not going to talk about leadership. You're going to talk about one of the sub benefits of effective leadership. It might be magnetically attracting top team performers, but you're not going to talk about a broad subject because you're not going to get cut through. And the reason you don't get cut through is everyone else is talking about it. So specifics will very often lead you to the third characteristic, which is differentiation. Now, let me, let me just say this. A lot of you, when you get in front of a prospect and you have a cup of coffee and you maybe have 40 minute conversation, they asking you how you work with your clients and you're describing it. And they're asking questions. You're asking questions. After about 30, 40 minutes, they're going to go, sounds terrific. Where do I sign? So in other words, you're going to convert most of the quality qualified prospect. If you have a cup of coffee with them, right? Right. So that's fine, but it's not scalable. And you don't, you know, you often don't know how well qualified the prospect is. So what we have to do with webinars is we have to take your cup of coffee conversation that took 40 minutes and we have to get cleanse it down to five seconds. And imagine that you put it on a billboard that you had to put the benefit of working with you in the form of a title and the content to, to, to the webinar on a billboard. And people are driving along the freeway or the motorway and they've got five seconds, you've got five seconds of their time for them to read the billboard and go, I want to go to that webinar. Now, I could have had a title like marketing with webinars, but eh, you know, that's not very specific and it doesn't get a lot of cut through. Or we could have a title like this one, how my clients are 19 times zones out of blah, 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 as I mentioned before. So we've got a benefit rich, it contains specifics, 19 time zones are the specifics, uh, yeah and predictable quality inbound benefit risk differentiated. So that's one example. Let me give you another example, another commercial example, Maxtel software client. Create, we create great point of sale, pause as point of sale in, in their trade, 
for QSRs as quick service restaurants. So this is what Max would say on his website and his business card when he did talks. What do you do for a living? We create great pods. So when he did an event, come along and see what great pods will do for your QSR. QSR is a place like McDonald's, Burger King, fast food restaurants. But when we applied this formula of benefit rich specifics and differentiated, this is what his title looked like. We increased the sales and profits in QSRs by 25% in 90 days guaranteed. You see how much more power that has and how that honeypot outside the forest is going to attract the owners of those quick service restaurants who are interested in the growth in their sales and profits. Uh, now, non-commercial example, because some of you are going to be going, well, that's okay for business to business, but what about business to personal? Here's a client, Karen Smith, um, a real person who would talk about anxiety counseling. Come along to our webinar and we'll talk about how we do anxiety counseling, which and anxiety is, is a crippling, debilitating, paralyzing condition. I've suffered for it in the garden variety, and it, it's absolutely crippling. Not, nothing is as is, is dire as some, what some of Karen's clients have suffered from. So we, we worked the formula, and this is what we came up with. First of all, a proprietary name for a service, rewire your mind, a simple three-step model to easily shift you from stressing to progressing in less than 30 days. So that's how you take, get the honey pot and put it outside the forest. In terms of attracting, um, I'm just going to skip ahead a bit here because I'm very conscious that we've got like 15 minutes left. So in terms of attracting audiences, where do you get them from? We, uh, the first thing I teach all my clients is to use OPN, other people's networks. So right now, I'm presenting to Sean's network. So OPN, case in point, it's kind of like you are the case in point. You're here. You hadn't heard from me, but you knew Sean and you knew how effective he was and he had integrity and credibility, et cetera. He invited you to the webinar. Boom, here you are. I'm presenting. So, and you know, Sean and I don't have a commission arrangement. Um, he kindly invited me to present because he felt that the content would be valuable to you. That, that's the deal. So OPN, Other People's Networks, is the best place to get your audiences from. And there are literally thousands of people out there who have quality email lists who have themselves integrity that would like you to present to their email list if you have a great presentation. And that's the content, the next thing we're gonna talk about. So the sequence is this, and by the way, the train tracks represent a system because the hardest part about getting a train from A to B is nothing to do with the train, it's laying down the tracks. So you need a system for getting an audience. You need a system for developing the asset, which is your webinar, PowerPoint and so on. And you need a system for the call to action. So everything that we teach is a system and people take our system and they customize it and they put it into place in their business. The other great place you can get audiences from is LinkedIn, but it's a specialty and it doesn't work through a nurture process. Uh, and we don't have time to go into it, but the best way of use of LinkedIn is, is, is nothing to do with posting articles. It's a simple connect and then invite to the webinar, but you need volume to make it happen. And I'll show you how to get the volume in a moment. So LinkedIn's great for executives because you can invite them to a boardroom briefing, which is a small eight only people, webcams on, but exactly the same content as your webinar. So it's still a webinar. It's kind of like a small group Zoom call, right? And that's great for executives because they don't tend to want to come to the big webinars, but they'll come to small ones. But exactly the same call to action, which is the book of consult. Now, 97% of marketing efforts fail because you don't want to do it. The things that you feel you should do or you must do are not the things that you're going to do every single day. And for marketing to be effective, it needs to be relentless. There needs to be a certain relentlessness about it. So what we do is we, we show our clients how to hire someone typically in the Philippines and we pay them 5 to $7 an hour and give them five hours a week and they get a generous monthly bonus for results. So if you followed our model, you'd have someone you're paying perhaps $25 a week to to initiate this marketing sequence. And they have a system which we've developed and proven over many years, which we give our clients. Our client has a Filipino freelancer, wakes up, wants to do the one hour work, and you don't really want to do this work because it involves data mining and going into the internet and having a look, runs our prospective OPN partners through a checklist and then through an algorithm we developed, invites that person onto uh, my client invites that person onto their podcast, establishes rapport, respect, relatability, and reciprocity, and then converts that person from someone 
who was a podcast guest into a partner that promotes their webinar. Shall I pause and take questions on that, Sean? Yeah, I mean, uh, that's, that's pretty much how Tom got me to, uh, you know, I was a guest in his podcast and we moved forward. Um, and I right. started asking your question. I have a few questions actually, Tom, myself. So um, right. with the title, like, you know, I'm looking at your book and, you know, get new clients in one hour per month. You know, obviously it's, it's very um, attractive. So, so anyone that wants to get demos or leads and clients would read it. Is there a certain length that that title should be? Is there a mid oh, like That's a great question. Or, it, you know, cause, because you can only put so much words into it. So is it, do you might recommend like 10 to 12 words, eight to 10, or what do you recommend for those, for those titles? Yeah, it, it, it's a great question. So well, there's a big difference between a title and say a unique sales proposition or an elevator yeah. pitch because the USP and the elevator pitch are designed to be heard. And our capacity to follow a sequence with our auditory sequence is much more limited than it is a visual sequence. That's true for 70% of people. What I'm saying here is you get a lot more real estate to play with when you have a title. Yeah. So people, people uh, you know, if, if someone said, what do you do for a living? Uh, I'm not going to say, well, I show, you know, I have 27 clients in 20, 15 times. <laughs> and all, well, you know, it's a bit, little bit much. So I just say, well, I, I teach people how to do marketing webinars and get, mostly all the clients they need in less than an hour a month. So that's the USP. With the title, you get a lot more real estate because people are going to be reading it in an email yeah. invitation or on a registration page. And their capacity to read and absorb the information is a lot greater than just to hear the information. So very often with clients, we'll do a title, which could be 12 or 15 words. And then we'll do a subtitle. And the subtitle, so the title is normally benefit rich and the subtitle is pain avoidance, you know, without having to. In my case, it might be if I wanted to do that without having to, uh, you know, waste money or, or damage your self-esteem with cold calling. Mm -hmm. So it's a great question, but you, 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 the title should be as long as it takes to get the job done, which is to cut through yeah. and motivate people and then as short as possible. Got it. Uh, and then my last question, I don't know about how you, how you found it lately, but I've always been a big fan of webinars. Um, and just simply because I've tried personally, even with our auto clothes, we never spent a dollar on Facebook ads or any of that stuff. We just never, we had retargeting for a bit, never got a return on our investment ever. Um, right. But what I have found over the last six months is the attendees at a webinar is much more now since, you know, the whole pandemic hit. Like I, we used to find about 30% used to attend from the register. We're now we finding almost it's, you know, 50, 60, some 70 and 80%. Have you found the same thing since in the last seven months that the, the attendee rate is a lot I higher than it used to be? I found it incredibly fickle, to be honest with you. Um, when when the when the U.S. presidential elections got serious, the numbers dropped. Yes. But prior to that, we were batting thirty to forty-one percent. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And I and as if we take if we take COVID out of it, because it's forced a lot of people to stay at home. And yeah. what am I going to do? Well, there's a webinar. I'll show up. Um, if we take COVID out of it before pre-COVID. Attendance levels for a lot of people were going down to twelve and a half percent. Oh wow! Nine percent, eight percent, seven percent. It was just appalling, and it's because everyone expects a replay. Yeah. People yeah. register. They go, well, I'll register, and I'm, you know, if I get a better offer the time, maybe I'll, I'll just wait for the replay. But they yeah. don't look at the replay. So if you go back to two thousand and eight, when I started doing webinars, we would do a replay because we'd get a fifty percent bump on the response rate with the follow up replay. Now, what happened is over a number of years, we programmed people to expect the replay. Mm -hmm. So what, what we do now is we are very explicit. When I do an email invitation, no replay in caps, like we're shouting, no replay. Uh, and there is a waiting list. People can go on if they go to the registration page. If you can't make the time, click here, we'll put you on the waiting list. But we're explicit. So that's why we get 41% average attendance rate. Good. But we also have a follow-up sequence which doesn't involve a replay. So, so a day after, we, we thank them for coming to the webinar, an hour after the webinar, Give them the call to action, which is to book a, book a chat with Tom.com. We should talk about that quickly too, um, because that's how you filter prospects. And then a day later, we they get a 23 page e guide summary of the webinar, but not a video replay, a PDF. And then 48 hours later, they get a five minute video which summarizes the webinar, but not a replay. 72 hours later, there's three days later, they get a one page blueprint. So we have this follow up system, and now we can generate literally two to three times whatever response rate we get from the webinar we will two to three times that but we still have high attendance rates yeah interesting um 
Sean, I think we've got an hour for this. Um, is there, I, I should get cracking then, right? If yeah, you know. can get cracking. I mean, I think we're going to probably hit the hour quick. We might have to do a sequel to this at some point because I think there's so much information okay. to provide. All right. But let's do, uh, let's, let's keep going. And uh, um, I'm right. sure these people think everyone's having some value here. Let, let's talk about the water filter. So let's say you've got 500 or 1,000 or 200 or 100, or whatever number of people registered for your webinar. And then you offer them a one-on-one -on -one consult, like a pre-client engagement consult, just to make sure that you know, you've got something that's going to be fit for their needs. On, on a webinar, you might have some people that don't have much of a budget right now. You might have people that it's not a good time for them to start. If you don't filter those folks out, it's, you're going to have a lot of kind of like dirty water in your pipeline. And we want to make sure that you have clean water in your pipeline. It's just a metaphor to say the people that are most likely to want to proceed with you at that given point in time and have the capacity to do that, they are the people that you want to book a one-on-one -on -one coaching call with. So how do you do that? What you do is you set up a landing page and you can just swipe and deploy the one that I have. I'm giving you this for two reasons. That's www.bookachatwithtom.com. So you go and book a chat with Sean.com, book a chat with Joey.com, book a chat with Susan.com, whatever, or book a call with or book a meeting with whatever you can get. But it's a nice, simple URL and it's easy for people to remember and it's easy for me to remember too, by the way. And, and so at the end of the webinar, what I do is I say to folk, and this is not kind of our traditional webinar, but, it, but it, you know, it's close. I say to folks, okay, if you want to implement marketing webinar systems, so you get free quality audience, a predictable flow of high quality new client inquiries every week, then go to bookachatwithtom.com, read the page, and if you're comfortable with it, go ahead and book a time. And when they go there, and you can swipe and deploy the system, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward, is they're going to see something like this. Now, it's just a landing page, and it says, you know, hi there, and thanks for stopping by to check out my Book a Chat with Tom offer. And it, and it goes on for the sake of time. I'll just scroll down the screen. And they scroll down, and it says, look, here's a bit of a heads up of what will happen when we'll meet. And then we go down further, and we say, you know, and it just talks about a conversation between two adults to see if I've got something that's right for you. And then we say, okay, this is what our meeting is not going to be. It's not going to be some sort of sales ambush, and it's not going to be, uh, you know, some, some free idea session where you think you could walk away and implement it because, you know, that's not really practical. It's not really realistic. So, so they read all that, and they're real clear when they come to the meeting what's going to happen, what's not going to happen. And then what we do is we go down, and they already know from the webinar normally what my pricing is. But they get to the bottom of the page, and if they try to click on that banner, they get an error message saying, you have to agree to these four agreements. The first agreement, and they just, they just click their mouse and they check the box, is they understand what the reason for the meeting is to see if we should be working together. The second agreement is that if we agree it's a good idea to work together, that they're ready to start. The third agreement is that they can afford the minimum program fee, which is $750 a month. It's 795, it's now 750. Uh, they understand that we have other pricing options as well, but frankly, you know, most people, are, uh, what they need is around about 750 a month over 12 months. That would pay for the program, pay for us to work together. So they have to agree to have my fees in their budget. And finally, I want them to agree that if they haven't attended one of my webinars, that they'll check out the replay and we'll put a link for that in the confirmation meeting. Now, once they check all the four boxes, then this link becomes active and they can go ahead and click on the link and then they get taken through to my booking calendar. And they can find a time that's convenient for them that I've made available for us to meet and talk about whether or not we should work together. So I wake up on a Monday morning and what I see, and this is just, this is typical of the week after a webinar, is like all of these turquoise colored meetings, these are all people that have made inquiries about working together. And I don't know how many there are on that page, but there's quite a few. So that's what happens for you in your practice, with your coaching, your training, your consulting business, is you wake up on a Monday morning and typically what you'll see is bookings from people who want to know more about working with you. So that's the water filter system. Perfect. Um, um, that is a well thought. We have one one question here before we get uh, stop at the at the top of the hour. That follow up system is awesome. I do agree, Francis. Do I need a million dollars to work with Tom? And then, do you help with developing the webinar? What to say? How to organize yeah. your our service? 
Yeah, so it's, it's, it's a good question. It's $750 a month over 12 months. You don't pay anything for the first 30 days because I want you to validate the effectiveness and the suitability of our system to your market. Make sure you're comfortable with us working together. Another thing that we, we do, which is a little bit different, is, is we, we, it's a standard package is we offer people a 30-day free test drive. So they've been to the webinar, been to the console, been to the console, we said, well, if you want to have a look at this, don't pay us any money. We'll give you full access to the whole system, the audience system, the content system, the call to action system, but don't pay us money. And oh, by the way, I'll meet with you every single week in a small group Zoom call and help you implement what you're learning with the online modules. And you'll be connected with a one-on-one -on -one coach for 24 seven messaging. So, and I'll give you my mobile phone number because I want you to know that we care about you implementing. So we do all of that without paying them any money. And the 30th day, if they're comfortable that this is a good decision, then they start paying. And this is, this is a point that you want to swipe and deploy. What stops people moving forward very often is they've paid money that sound a bit like you, to people who sound a bit like you and they've been disappointed. So you want to take the objection for them out of it. So it's 750 a month, start paying after 30 days if you, if you agree it's a good idea. Um, the, other, the other comment is, yes, it's, it's really prescriptive and it's really step-by-step. -step. So we, we give, for example, the PowerPoint template we give you is 31 slides. And I, you know, if I give you that PowerPoint template, I say to you, when you bring it back, I don't want to see 32 slides. <laughs> and by that, because it's a set sequence. And this is why we only take on clients from seven different segments. We don't take on people doing chiropractic or, or architectural services. We only take on business coaches or coaches generally, uh, consultants, financial planners, SaaS developers, people marketing online courses. And the rare exception of the physical good is the high-end luxury goods that might cost three, four, five hundred thousand dollars $500,000. But other than that, because we're very prescriptive, we can scale. And because we're very prescriptive, we can be specific about what, where you get your audiences from and so on. Does that, does that answer the question okay, Sean? Yeah, perfect. Well, um, okay. that was amazing, Tom. Thank you so much for, uh, for everything here today. I think we're going to have to probably do another one because I think there's so much more content that we can provide and value for the audience. But I want to thank you um, once again. Um, and also, um, where can people, I guess, I guess people go to Amazon, but where can people get your, your books um, if they want to get your books? Book, they can go to Amazon. Okay. Um, we have changed the title, the color, so don't get confused, but there's marketing webinars. Yep, perfect. And if they want to get in touch uh, with you, um, right behind you, I think, right? <laughs> Bookachatwithtom.com. Go there, read it, and um, let's have a conversation. Uh, I don't do selling as such, so it'll simply be a relaxed conversation. We'll walk through where your business is at, where you want to get it to, and we'll figure out. I've got a little algorithm, so we'll figure out whether or not uh, I'm a good option for you. Um, I've got lots of you know, people booking those calls. So it's not like I feel I need to arm twist anyone. You want to go ahead, you go ahead. You don't, you don't. <laughs> Perfect. Well, thanks again. Um, I think everyone enjoyed it. Good stuff. We got, thank you, Sean and Tom. Great webinar by Joseph. Thank you again, Tom. And uh, we'll have to do this again. Look forward to it. Thanks, Sean. Thanks everyone.